So you may be thinking, I want to get into the wildlife game. I don't want to spend a lot of money. Maybe I'll just get a bridge cam. Well, may I suggest that you take the bridge to hell, asshole? Uh, where Satan's waiting for you. That's a bad move. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. I think I scared off any potential wildlife shouting Satan words. That's on me. That's on me. So, the other day I'm browsing through Amazon Warehouse. Usually the deals are pretty shit. But sometimes you get a deal better than you'd ever find even someone selling something used for. Like, really good deals. So I always check it multiple times a day. And I saw a Canon SX70. I used to have the SX50, and it was decent. I got some lizard shots in Thailand. Like, I probably clickbaited the hell out of this title. Like, why you should never buy a bridge cam or something, but... If you're just starting out, like, they're actually really good just to see, like, oh my god, I can actually see that hawk from, like, four miles away. Like, most of them have a 1,200 mil zoom. Nikon even further, 2,000 mils. This is a precarious path. I'm scared to death. It's all ice. It's sheer ice. I could fall to my doom. My downright doom. Oh, man. Oh, my god. There's one of those little songbirds. Oh, hey. Oh man, I got some footage earlier. Let's just play that B-roll and pretend I'm filming it right now. Well, look at those. So here's the deal with bridge cams. You get this all-in-one package. You don't need to buy any lenses. It's just like a 24 to 1200 zoom. They're usually pretty stable. The autofocus, like you don't have to think about anything. You just, oh, you see something, you're zooming in. It's a power zoom. So none of the shaky zoom rotations. It's actually pretty good to start out. So like definitely try one, but in the end, here's the thing. Get one first to see if you even like this. Cause there are frustrations. You hear birds and you're like, where are you? Where is that? Oh God, I you're laughing. So there's frustrating moments and then you see something. Oh, you get it out and then it flies away before you, ha, ah, man. I suck. There's a lot of frustrating things and who knows what wolf is gonna bite your ankles. You never know. But so get a little bridge cam, don't spend much money, find one used and then see if you like it. If you do, that's where something like this is gonna come into play. It's, it's the difference between getting footage that looks inspiring versus just like documenting that was a Robin. So it was a Robin. That's what you're gonna get with a bridge cam. It's not like, oh, wow. Whereas like if you get some slow motion footage on a full frame and it's just like this 3D pop on a bird and you're like, holy shit, look at that. It's just fantastic. Or Micro Four Thirds, it doesn't have to be full frame. I appreciate that Olympus, anything. The problem with bridge cams is the tiny sensor, terrible toniatures. You get this noisy footage. If you want slow-mo on top of it, it's pure grain. If you're in like a low light scenario in a forest, you're not gonna get like good looking footage. It's gonna be like basic, very basic. And I can always tell when somebody's using a little point and shoot tiny sensor versus like a micro four thirds or APS-C full frame if you got it. I can usually spot the full frame. I used a big prime lens too on my full frame, my 400 2.8 or something like bullshit. But I tell you, as soon as you step up into even micro four thirds, you start getting a look. It's like, oh wow, this is like kind of professional looking. Look at me, I'm a documentary, a, a tarian. Documentarian. That just sounds like I eat documentaries. That's my next diet, subscribe to Vegetable Police. But I found even that Sony RX10 Mark IV the footage just looked bad compared to the Olympus even. So it's like, it's not a huge difference in sensor size, especially when you're in slow-mo on Olympus, it's almost one inch sensor territory, maybe even smaller, because one of you educated me on, even like Micro Four Thirds doesn't use the whole sensor. That sucks. And like full frame and APS-C use more of the sensor, but None of them are like designed 16 by nine sensor. They're all photo based. Oh man, if I had my way, 
I would be designing a video based sensor and we'd crop if you wanted to take a photo, take the edge off. I take off the edge with crack. What does this sign even mean? Should I go up this way? That looks like sheer death. There's like not even a chance you're gonna make it up there. What? What's the warning? Is there a shield over here? Where's the shield? Oh, this is all ice. I'm scared. Someone send help. This is terrible. I saw somebody biking down here. Who the hell would bike on this trail? I love getting out in nature. You probably can't see a damn detail, but like this is just a cliff hanging over a creek and there's just magic everywhere. I've been walking like all through the trails down there and now I'm seeing them from above. It is fantastic. Just get out in nature, even if you have a bullshit Sony RX-10 that gives you nothing to dream about. Just has this small sensor look. So you get back and you see this footage, it's like, yeah, it's a duck. It's in focus, I think. You're not inspired to continue doing it. It's bullshit. Like once I took that EM-1 out with the 75 to 300 and I got some close up shots, I was like, wow. Oh man, I can't wait to go out again. And now I just keep going out and it's always different. Even though I'm seeing the same creatures, robins, hawks, like very basic stuff, it's always different. They're always behaving differently. I saw a group of robins, like they're all hanging out together. There was hundreds of them. It was fantastic. And I saw this hawk, he was on a pole. I was like, okay, I'm gonna wait for him to take off. Then this truck, some truck comes up on my trail. Are you kidding me? Scared the hawk off barely got the shot but I tell you there's always magic waiting to happen it doesn't matter if all I ever filmed was robins eventually they're doing something like a little mating call a little wink the male winks at the girl and oh look at that they're always gonna do something different so it's fun to just get out every day and it feels good to breathe that fresh air fantastic you could die on this cliff very muddy this sucks Stay home. It'll be a lot safer. There's a squirrel. Oh, wow. I just tried to kneel down and track that squirrel. I tell you, Sony, I don't know, man, this manual focus ring is so smooth and I fell in love with it. I was like, wow, it's a little sensitive, but, and now I'm really noticing how sensitive it is. One little move and you're way beyond. There's gotta be a sweet spot. Like Fuji was the sweet spot once you're in the area. And then it's like, oh yeah, I can really tell if you're in focus or not. Whereas Sony, it's hard to tell. That peaking sucks. So I think I have an announcement to make. We are pouncing and returning to the Fuji cult. We got an X-T4 on the way. 100 to 400 in debate. Someone's trying to sell it. Hopefully I can get it. I went with it over the 70 to 300 because I figure Olympus will be my tiny cam. And then if I want something heavier, I go with the Fuji, and then I'm not sure what to do with this, if I sell it or not. I don't like the converter, so I'm gonna try to sell that. Might keep this? I'm not sure. It's so inspiring, it's just not much reach. But the footage is glory. But maybe the Fuji will be better and then I won't need this. Who knows? That's the fun thing about the mirrorless game. Like there's all kinds of upgrades and different advantages in the bridge cam world. What are you gonna do? They're all the same sensor size. Some have a little more zoom, some less. It's all the same basic shit. What, do you, what excitement is there to upgrade to? And once you buy the camera, you're done. There's nothing for it. Maybe filters. What are you gonna do with that? I was actually considering getting one of those dedicated slow motion cams, like a Edger Tronic or something. <laughs> one of those like, I don't know if I could find one somewhat decently priced, then you'd need like a, a stabilized Canon lens or something. 
I don't know how that would work, but I'm all about the slow motion. I don't care for regular speed wildlife. Like you see that every day. There's nothing magical about it. The slower, the better. Sometimes the animal doesn't do much. So I'm wasting a lot of frames there, but that's what I do. It's funny. I put way too much thought into wildlife gear pretty happy with just the Olympus and the 75 to 300. I just, I have money and I want to put more into it and get better. We have better, but there's not much reach. Sometimes it's good enough, but I just think way too much about it. To this day, nothing really beats the Fuji X-T4 and the 70 to 300 for size, weight, quality, price. It's hard to beat that thing. It's just tough to find that lens. When we went to Henry's, my friend had that. The owner, the store guy was like, how did you get that lens? Oh my God, I thought he was gonna leap over the counter and bite my friend's neck. He almost did, just to taste that lens. I don't know, man, it's rare as hell. So that's a fantastic combo. I just, I worry. What the hell is this? Who designed this trail? That is murder waiting to happen. It's angled. I should never be angling off towards a cliff. This is dangerous. So start with the bridge cam. Don't intend to inspire anybody with the footage. You won't. There will be zero ton of potential. A slight bit, not enough. Then move on up to full frame immediately. I do kind of wish I would have got that 200 to 600, but because I never put this in my bag anyway, I'm just carrying it. But if I'm on a scooter, I'll need to put it in the bag. So. How you doing? I'm gonna go. What's the best wildlife camp? Post it down below. After you buy a camera conspiracy t shirt. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna cross this deathly path. Thanks for watching. Subscribing.